So we're looking at photographs that I have dug out of the archive in Disability Action. Yeah. Um, but this isn't really about disability action, it's more to kind of understand how things happened and, and why they happened. And, yeah. and obviously you were with Disability Action for over 30 years, 30 years. So um, a long while. So yes, hopefully you'll be able to take uh, us through some of it. So we've got some really early pictures here and, and you weren't always chief executive of Disability Action. No, I as wasn't. Many people probably think that you were. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so this was uh, Stanley Miller. Okay. He was from Oma, and he had a, a a rugby accident, so he was paralyzed from the neck down. He was very good. He was uh, very responsive to people, and uh, always knew the uh, the uh, policies. So he was our chair. Is he that, was the chair. He yeah. was just for the actions chair. And uh -huh. in some of the old video we have, you see quite a lot of Stanley doing stuff on access. Yeah. So was access the main thing back then in, in the 80, early 80s? Is well, that... it sort of still is, which is a bit of a, bit of a pity. But yes, access. At, at the start, it was all about the uh, physical environment, just about uh, buses and uh, access and those kinds of things it wasn't about rights then and in terms of you see quite a lot of pictures of buses and cars throughout the years as well yeah i mean i think there's one in there of the a low floor bus as well yeah there's one here of you with um i didn't know who this was but it's it's chris Patton. it is yeah and a bus uh -huh. <laughs> so well a bus was tangible you could actually feel a bus and use a bus it was easy it was easy for politicians as well as everybody else and did the politicians get it back then or was it a big, what did you have to do to make them get it, I suppose? No, uh, they didn't get it. Um, and I'm not sure that they've got it yet. But um, it, was about, it was about saying, here's a tangible thing and people can't get into it because they're a wheelchair user or they're not a wheelchair user, they're a disabled person. And it was about, that they got that, they got that it, was time to change, but it was never about rights. It was just about tangible things. And here's an interesting one. It seems to be the first ramp into Belfast, the back of Belfast City Hall. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember the man's name, but he was a councillor uh, and he was uh, a wheelchair user. And he, it wasn't even the ramp, it was the uh, toilet as well. There was no toilet for disabled people. So, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. But that's probably back in the early 80s or mid-80s. I'd, I'd say so. Yeah, I'd and say the, so. then there's a picture here of um, the barriers. Not everybody will remember these, but the barriers that you had to go through getting into the city centre. That yes. must have been a huge barrier for disabled people. It was, and as well as that, they couldn't park. And, um, you know, it was all just too difficult. And I think that's what it was always. It was always too difficult. So what, that's good. What would you have done in those days to get into the shopping centre? Did you have to go through a different barricade or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think what you did was go the the long route. You know, the, you went not the same way as everybody else did, and that made you segregate it as well. You know, it was all about not doing the same things as uh, non non disabled people, and that was just not nice. Uh, and then in some of these photographs then as well, we see Northern Ireland Council on Disability. So that was the predecessor to Disability Action? Yeah, that was before 86. Um, yeah, we, we changed our name quite a bit. Uh, and that was about people responding to the movement of people with disabilities and uh, how it began to move slightly towards uh, rights rather than charity and those kind of things so yes so around then the <laughs> the late 80s early 90s there's this movement and push towards legislative change yeah that was perhaps one of the biggest campaigns we had because it was so divisive uh, and people with disabilities didn't really get divisive so it was very strange and uh, having to front it I thought was uh, good for me because I'd never had that opposition and you had to really focus your arguments uh, and the whole thing about the, the Disability Discrimination Act was that um, was it 
all or nothing and I think that was the case a lot of people in England particularly uh, because there were more zealots in England <laughs> um, they uh, said no you don't want it because it's not it's only a compromise so so what happened did did the did the movement start for legislation start off in England and then come over here or was yeah. there a, a a feeling of you know there's the stuff obviously that came from America with yeah. the America's with Disability Act and then did Northern Ireland take that on or was it kind of what way did it happen? No it, it was all kind of in pieces because at that point I don't think uh, Disability Action ha or anybody really had uh, a rights-based approach and everybody in uh, England, Scotland and Wales were much better at we were uh, than we were at doing the disability stuff. You know, uh, didn't it took a long time for us to do that, and that was partly because of the troubles and it was uh, difficult to get about and all of the rest of it. And we kind of kept ourselves hidden in that um, and didn't take the opportunity to get up. So, uh, in the rest of GB, that there was a, a rising, if you like, a, but there wasn't any in, in or, or at least there was, uh, it was about 20 years too late. So you mentioned the troubles there. It must yeah. have had an impact in terms of, we're talking like late 80s, early 90s, obviously the focus is on getting a resolution and a peace process. Yeah. So um, did that mean things took a, a back foot? Obviously to get the legislation even through in that time was is, is quite significant. Um, I think... Uh, we did something to get the legislation through, but I mean, don't kid ourselves. Uh, it was just because it was happening in England more than anything we were doing, you know. Yeah. And the Rights Now campaign, uh, there's some photographs here. It's great. There's people like Aidan Short and Anne Collins and um, some people, some faces who I don't know. Um, Paul is in this as well. Uh, he used to work for CIL. I would know him, his yeah. face, but I mean... What was obviously that's people. There's Paul there. It's, yeah. It's people out on the streets. Did that happen very often or not at all or uh, somewhere in the middle? Um, and it was our our allies, our people who understood that it was about the 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 participation of rights, uh, rather than anything else. So no, they um, was it two or three times. Uh, the, did a demonstration in the street. Yeah. You can see that because there's only one policeman. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> and security barriers. Yeah, and, that's right. Yeah, so no, it's just interesting to see um, all the different people that were out. Yeah. And you were saying there was that kind of contention. So what was the main contention? It was mostly that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't strong enough. Uh, there wasn't a compromise that people found acceptable. Now, we found it acceptable because we had nothing. You know, uh, so I think that um, looking at uh, at how it went, uh, there wasn't. It was contentious here, but it wasn't um, massively well in terms of not not having anything that was contentious. But in England, it was really it was really uh, very divisive, mm. and um, you had the zealots, and you had. Um, the people who uh, who followed them, and I think they were they were much more uh, divisive than than we were. Okay. So there's some interesting um, photographs then of you with various different uh, pl political representatives yeah. over over many years. I yeah. would say how important was political engagement, and and how difficult was it, um, and did it change over time? Well, it depends who was reasonable, who wasn't, um, in terms of the uh, the politics. I think people thought it was a good thing. They couldn't say that it wasn't a good thing to uh, to talk to disability or people with disabilities. And I think that's why I was in most of the photographs, because there weren't that many people who were disabled who um, had a leadership role. So uh, it wasn't me. It was uh, the. The fact that I was disabled was most important. Um, I think some of them got a bit edgy as it moved towards a rights-based approach, but there were 
they were okay. They weren't they weren't proactive, but they did what we told them, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and in terms of that shift then towards that rights-based approach, what do you think was the main driver for that? Well, I think it was the UN Convention, particularly, and the fact that uh, we did a lot of training um, about what rights meant and who had rights and what they had. So I think... Uh, it was a bit like, um, it was a bit, well, put it this way, the training and the justification, and not the justification, the awareness of it was, I think, the most important thing because most people lived um, on their own or with a family and, and saw themselves as individuals, not as a movement. So I think that was uh, quite important. Okay, so we've got lots of pictures then of events over numerous years and, and we can tell kind of by the clothes and the hairstyles Thank what, you for that. <laughs> what years they were. But obviously then the events seem to be around things like employment and, and access, and, access uh -huh. and, and, and transport um, and, and things seem to kind of, there seems to be, as you say, lot, lots more of that engagement and bringing yeah. people to, together. Yeah. Um, how important was that in terms of, of bringing about change? I think it was important, but I think part of the the, six, uh, the failure was that we didn't give uh, people with disabilities the right kind of shove to get interested and to do things. I think we didn't do that very well, uh, mm. and that's a pity. So we have things then, we've photo lots of photographs of cars and there's a nice one of John Carberry yeah. um, looking very young. Um, and there's a few more. This And a really old one of a bus as well. But that was the first bus. And we only got the bus. Uh, the, that was uh, 82. That was the... Um, we got the International Year of Disabled People. And we didn't say to give us money. We didn't want money. But we got money anyway. And um, so we developed... Uh, a protocol for using the money and one of the things we did was uh, look at the first bus as you can see the Northern Ireland Council for the Handicapped um, <laughs> was one of our recent names or one of our obvious names that went a long time ago so yeah the language changes and yeah. and, and the photographs kind of change from that very access transport yeah. focus to, to more people in the room yeah. talking and I think these are particularly I think this might be just after the DDA has come in yeah. so in terms of implementation on the DDA and, and did it make change I mean what are your thoughts on I that I think it did but I think it would have been better if it had some um, government money and that needed money to do the awareness and the training work that wasn't done and I think that's where you know you still see ex non-accessible buildings. Uh, it's getting better with transport, but uh, those, you know, it's okay to see the tangible things because you can see them, you can actually confront them, but you can't confront many of the things that people see as barriers. And, and what the photographs don't really show, but some of the older publications and stuff is about changing attitudes. And yeah. it was always key thing for, for the organization, but more broadly. so. Do you think that attitudinal change has shifted over the decades and, and what still needs to be done? Well, we always saw it as as the key thing uh, and we still see it as that. And it moved a bit, but maybe I'm just too impatient. I didn't think it used to, it, it was enough um, to do what we needed to do. I just want to go back a bit again because one of the le bits of legislation that isn't often talked about is Section Seventy Five. Yes. Of, of which obviously was part of the Good Friday Agreement. Yeah. And disability is one of the groups that is is within that. Yeah. Was there a bit of work to had to be done to ensure disability was included within that, or or what was the? I think it was a very good thing, and we were part of it, uh, at the start. Um, I think lots of people kind of didn't understand. But I think now, particularly things like um, trusts and hospitals and those kind of things, the equality implications of what we're doing is very important because it was the 
drill them down to see what the actual equality implications were for people that people didn't understand and I don't think they still understand it. So thinking back to yourself then, what would you say to that younger disabled person now? Well, I was a younger disabled person, in case you don't know that. Um, <laughs> and I think the same thing. I think people have to believe in themselves. You have to make sure that what you do is about about rights and not infringing on other people's rights but just having the same things as other people uh, and we deserve that. Music